Hello, and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. Think Tech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com, as well as on Think Tech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube channel. And for viewers out there who are watching us live, you may send us questions to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. Let's launch into today's show. I'm excited to introduce the principal owner of Banyan Recruitment, which is, you know, the show's title is Banyan Recruitment, the business of executive recruitment. So we have Charlie Tate, principal owner of Banyan Recruitment, and my friend. So welcome to the show, Charlie. Great to be here, Kathleen. Thanks for having me. Of course. So tell our viewers about yourself. I'd be happy to. Um, again, my name is Charlie Tate, principal owner of Banyan Recruitment. We are a local executive search firm. Um, I'm sure we'll touch a bit on that as we go through it, but um, born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Um, been out here for about nine years. Uh, been doing executive recruiting here in Honolulu for about that entire time, about eight and a half, nine years. Um, yeah, as you mentioned, friend of yours. Um, you know, I, as far as activities that I do outside of the business, I volunteer for uh, Boys and Girls Club, I uh, just started paddling recently and um, part of the Young Professionals uh, Organization Professional Development Committee. And that is a great network. That's, you know, we, we did meet three mutual friends through the YP program. So I'm thankful for that. So let's go into your company. How did you, what inspired you to start it with, you know, you, the individuals that you started it with or what was, what was your inspiration? Yeah, you know, good question. Um, you know, one of the things I would say, just in general, I think that the world of recruitment, staffing, executive search, all get kind of bundled into one category. Um, there certainly are a lot of designations and a lot of differences between all three of those, even within each subcategory. Um, I guess my personal story is that I started working for a international firm here when I moved to Honolulu. We, specif we uh, worked specifically within senior level finance and accounting positions. Um, I had been previously working in a larger market in Chicago. Um, when I moved here, like a lot of people, I think there was a little bit of call it culture shock. Um, it's a small community, um, which is truthfully one of the things that I've grown to really love about working here, living and working here. Um, I felt like, quite honestly, the, the, the tactics that were used were really sweeping and, and somewhat mainland based, I guess if you could put it that way. Um, you know, I think very much of the people that succeed here, particularly in Honolulu and Hawaii, for that matter, are um, people that are here for the long haul and, and try to do not only the, the right thing that aren't guided by metrics and KPIs and worried about getting fired the next day. Um, so from a, from a base standpoint, I'd say that was a big piece of it. And then, you know, from a, a tactical standpoint, I felt like it was very much um, Looking around at our competition, I felt there's a lot of catch-all type organizations. We'll fill anything from delivery drivers to CFOs. Um, our goal when we started the business was to be very tactical with it, um, targeted, um, more quantity, or excuse me, quality over quantity that business. So people shy away from the term headhunters. I, I, I don't. I think that's very much what we do. Um, we're very selective with the companies we work with as well as the candidates and try to provide a very tailored experience from start to finish on both parties. And, and part of that is by limiting your bandwidth and not taking on too much. So Charlie, let's go over that. What are the specific sectors or industries that Banyan Recruitment targets? Sure. So myself and my business partner kind of grew up in the world of um, senior level accounting, finance, management, consulting, and then peripherally HR operations. Um, I'd say that that's still, uh, and, and IT, I'd say that that's still really our, our target demographic primarily because I think we're the deepest knowledge base in those areas. Um, we kind of start, I guess you could say, admit to senior level positions. Um, again, to kind of get back to the difference between maybe staffing companies and executive recruit is, um, it does have to do with the, the level of candidates that we work with. Um, so yeah, quite honestly, in this market, it's been a lot of, we started with 
mainly just finance and accounting. We've branched off into uh, different segments based on some of our better clients' needs, some of the companies that people seem to want to work for. So um, we've stretched a bit. We've brought on a few people that specialize in IT, um, and we somewhat take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, if they've been a great client of ours in the past, and they've got a very specific need, we'll, we'll give it a crack, we'll give it a shot and come back either with hopefully some options or at least some uh, industry information and what we're seeing in the market. Let's delve into that further. So you service clients as well as candidates. Could you tell us more about your screening process when it comes to the companies you work with, as well as when it comes to the candidates that you um, help out? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And vetting is a big piece of, I think, what most quality recruiters do. And generally speaking, it's I think it's done on the candidate side, or at least that's what the impression is. Um, I think one of the advantages of working in a somewhat smaller market, um, you can't beat time. The amount of time that you spend getting to know companies and meeting with people that that share with it, what their experience have been like working for companies. Um, that became clear the more you work here after nine years. Um, those things can, of course, change, but um, focusing on clients, you know, I, I think the big piece is if you see consistent retention issues with organizations, the question inevitably has to be why. Um, is it a cultural thing? Is it based on the industry? Is it have nothing to do with the, the way that they have things in place, but maybe it's just a, a high volume or high turnover type of industry? Um, so I think that that plays a big role in the type of, I guess, the, the long-term success that we have, because going into this, putting our name on a candidate um, that we place with the company, there's an inherent risk. People are irrational at times, and, and you can't really predict. Um, but I think that as a recruiter, as an executive um, search recruiter, the goal is to minimize that as much as possible, minimize the outside factors. And if you know a company is had a good reputation, they generally do what's right by their people, um, they compensate fairly, they do regular evaluations. Those are things that um, I think speak to the, the long-term viability and likelihood a candidate will stay. Um, from a candidate standpoint, you know, those are based on multiple conversations and it, somewhat of a gut instinct after doing this for some time. Um, it's a, it can be somewhat of a lengthy process getting to know folks, particularly on the, the intake side of things. The first time working with someone, I think sometimes we surprise them at how interested we are in their background and their life and insisting to go out to coffee with them or um, digging into things that you might not traditionally run into with a recruiter. And the reason for that is twofold. We want to get to know who they are as a person, but we also want to be able to tell their story to our clients so that we're not just forwarding resumes, we're taking an extra step, providing a bit of context in who they are personally, professionally, what's important to them outside of work. Um, those things all go into a successful partnership. You may have already slightly touched upon this, but what exactly is executive recruitment? What types of positions do you and your company help out with? What type of individuals and professionals approach you for assistance? Sure, that's a, that's a good question. Um, again, it is evolving somewhat as we go. Um, generally speaking, it's, 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 it's professional services, I guess, and where we specialize. So that, that covers a broad range. Um, I think we do take it somewhat case by case. Um, I guess fully transparent, I think one of the easier ways to just distinguish where folks are at and I guess how much level of value we'd be able to provide kind of does go by their target compensation range and where they've been at traditionally. Um, you know, we've worked positions at staff, uh, senior, all the way up to C-level positions, executive level positions, presidents. Um, again, it's kind of case by case. Executive recruiting, I think, just to, to separate it from maybe staffing or your general recruiter is the searches are more targeted. Organizations have a very clear idea on what they're looking for. It's usually a longer sales process as far as them interviewing, vetting out the candidates. Um, so it's, it kind of goes back to what I said before. It's a bit more quality over quantity, um, which allows us to, I guess, shape our message and, and deliver on, on the promises that we are making as well. 
does it cost people, whether clients or candidates, anything, right? You know, money or uh, a retainer fee or whatever to use your executive search firm? Another solid question, Kathleen, because uh, that does come up a lot, um, particularly folks that haven't worked with recruiters in the past. Um, the one thing I always tell candidates and always have is the only thing that I ask for you, from you, I should say, is transparency and do your best to try to get back to me uh, as quickly as you can. Other than that, um, there's no fee for our service in the least bit. Um, going back to being a small community, um, you know, referrals and, and doing right even by our competitors is something that I think helps us sustain as a business. So if I speak with someone and don't feel like our business or our, our model is really best suited for them, um, I'm happy to pass them along to anyone or provide any sort of advice or resume suggestions or anything that I can um, just to make sure that the experience was positive. Um, it's, it's a very simple concept, but it's written all over our website is, I mean, truly the golden rule is just doing the right thing, um, you know, as best you can, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that kind of sums it up. I mean, for the most part, it's really try to give back as best you can. Be honest, they be upfront with folks. Don't try to spin people's tires just for the sake of lining up a conversation and, and saying that you did it. I love that. Everything has to be purposeful. We have a few minutes before we go on break. So could you walk us through the process of your services? Absolutely. So um, they all start maybe at different stages. Um, we do a lot of proactive recruiting with folks that we just will reach out to and you know say, hey, if, if you're ever looking for something, you got a great background, here's what we do. We'd love to have a conversation, fresh or free. Um, other times it starts with clients that are reactively looking to fill a position that they lost somebody. Um, I'll say up front right now as the executive search team, we're not going to be fastest to market. So if you're looking for a CFO tomorrow, we're probably not going to be the best resource for you. Um, and that's by design, ultimately. Um, if you're ready to hire the first warm blooded person that walks in the door, there's a chance that there, you know, there's going to be somewhat of, uh, maybe not the right, the, the right mentality going into the hire. We want it to be a long-term partnership. And I think that there's a vetting process on the employer side as well as the employee side. Um, so uh, like I said, to go back to your question, sometimes employers come to us um, looking for new positions. Um, hey, we've got this idea, we've got this thought. Do you have anybody that fits the mold? Um, from there, you know, we take each position case by case. We'll spend some time um, either directly targeting folks, sharing some people within our network. Again, everything that we've done to build this business has been purely word of mouth. Um, and in this market, you, you kind of have to do right by people to do that. At least that's our mentality. So they all start at different places, but ultimately the goal is to facilitate conversations with top tier talent and hopefully top level businesses. Um, that, that process out, make it as smooth of a process as possible for both the client and the candidate. Um, we help that process all the way through to providing references, background checks, and then assisting with the negotiations, which truly, I think, is one of the overlooked aspects of it, both sides really working with recruiters. Um, that's one of the areas that I think there are a lot of times miscommunication. You don't know how high to come in, how low to come in. You don't want to uh, alienate anybody, but you don't want you want to know your value. And that goes for both sides. So our goal is to make that process as transparent as possible, make both parties feel good about you know, if it's the right fit, joining this new organization and bringing this new person on. Um, and again, it's a partnership between both sides. Okay, well, thank you for that, Charlie. We are going to go on a short break, but when we return, we'll be asking you more questions about your business, as well as some challenges that you may have faced within the last couple of years. So we will be right back.
Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. Our guest today is Charlie Tate, Principal Owner of Banyan Recruitment. So Charlie, let's pick up from where we left off. You were talking about the process. Um, oh, I, I try not to say, um, did not make it this time. But as far as the last two years have gone, what are some challenges that you and your company have faced, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic? Sure. Sure. I think, you know, every every uh, organization has dealt with this in one way, shape or form. There's no question about that. There were a lot of, um, let's be honest, there were a lot of concerns going into it, um, particularly with, uh, you know, recruiting can be seen as an ancillary service that, that not every organization budgets for. Um, I believe that there's a lot of value in it, and that's our job to prove that. But um, when the when people are being laid off and, and tough decisions were being made, there was some trepidation going into the year. Um, we were very fortunate from a timing standpoint, um, particularly given the fact that we had several years prior to that to really establish our credibility with, with our clients. I think if we had started this business at a different time, um, that would have been a heck of a lot different. So we're very fortunate from that standpoint. Um, you know, challenges, I, I think, similar to what a lot of business owners have dealt with. You know, we had just signed a lease on a larger office. We had just hired two new employees um, in April of 2020. You can't script that any better. Um, you know, for the longest time, we, we didn't utilize the offices. We kind of needed to rethink how we train folks and how we communicated on a daily basis, which ultimately has really benefited us now, uh, particularly as we have offices throughout the mainland. We have employees working in Hilo, Chicago, Austin. Um, so I, I think that fortunately for us, our business lends well to being able to work remotely. Um, it, challenges, you know, I, I think those were really the big ones. I mean, ultimately, it was staying present in the minds of clients, even when you want to talk yourself out of it at times and say, you know, who's hiring at this point? The world's put on hold. Um, so it really tested our um, I guess just uh, ability to stay on it and and talk to people and have those conversations and say, hey, you know, what's new with you? Not too much. I've been in my house like everybody else for the last three months and not sure what's happening next. But, you know, those conversations um, have led to multiple placements over the last couple of years by just being honest, having those chats um, early on, even when there was so much uncertainty. So, Charlie, what you're saying is that the, as far as your clients and even the candidates go, the process when it comes to matching up the right professionals with the right companies is fairly long, right? Yeah, you know, does, I, does that I, sound it, accurate? It depends on your definition of long. Okay. Um, I think that if you ask um, your typical staffing organization that's used to getting a job and then pumping people out within the next 48 hours, which is the business model for most. Uh, it is, it is, which is why we're very selective with the positions that we decide to undertake because, you know, from a bandwidth standpoint, um, this kind of goes to more of long-term growth and how that's managed. And so much of what we've done at Banyan is controlling our message. And, you know, I think any organization that's, that's going through a growth stage or has that ability to bring on folks understands how important it is to control that message. Um, it's one thing when it's two principal owners, but it's a different story when you have salaried employees or contract employees working for you. So um, I would say, you know, we're very upfront with our clients as far as the timeline. So if we have a position that we agree to undertake, um, again, there's no commitment from our clients as far as what we um, expect to be paid up front. But what we do give them is a general timeline and say, look, we're going to allocate time to this and we're going to come back to you in a week or a week and a half. We're going to come back with either what we're seeing in the market, um, hopefully a short list of candidates for you to choose from. But if for whatever reason we're not finding people that are either a interested or fit the requirements or the salary band that's provided, you know it's our responsibility to educate our clients on that because they don't have a chance to see it. They may be a mile deep in their industry, but um, it's a unique job market more than ever. It's changing, and I think that that's our commitment to our to our clients and to our candidates is to tell them what we're seeing, good, bad, or indifferent. Can you tell us? about some success stories that um, you've experienced since starting the company. When did you say you guys um, started 2014? We, we started Daniel Group in 2017. 2017, okay. Approaching five years. Um, 
you know, there, there truly is, you know, I, I had done multiple other sales in my career. There's nothing more satisfying than truly finding a great fit personality, culturally, technically, and just seeing the gratification on particularly a candidate's face. I mean, I've seen it on both sides. Um, a position that's been hard to fill, a position that's critical. Um, the, love, the level of relief when that person comes on board and they are who they, they thought they were going to be. Um, the one that jumps to my mind right out of the gates is actually my most recent placement. And it was with an organization that I really think very highly of. They are a um, nonprofit venture capital firm locally here called Elemental Accelerator. And they are um, committed to long-term sustainability, green energy, and they, um, not to go too far down into their pitch, but a wonderful company led by Don Lippert. Um, I've worked with them uh, a, a good amount in the past and I've really bought into their cause. And um, most recently they were looking for um, somebody to kind of be an executive assistant and a shadow and to learn from, from their CEO and president, Don. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet this candidate. And after the first conversation, I just got the gut feeling. I'm like, this seems like the type of person that they're going to love, um, which helps getting to know our organizations over time. You can't beat that. Um, she started a few weeks ago. I've had many conversations on both sides and both, both parties are just thrilled. Um, it was a good match. It was a smooth process. When it goes like that, there are a few things better. They're not all like that, but that's the first one that comes to mind. Well, I think that's awesome. So a lot of what you do hinges on you being able to read people and going by your gut, right? Yeah. You know, the more that I've done this, the more I rely on my gut and the more I tell the people that I work with, candidates and clients alike, that, that it's tough to, you, you can't always measure it. You can't quantify it the same way, but you know, I say if, if someone's even reluctant to go on an interview, but they're like, you know what, I'll check it out. Go with your gut. What does your gut tell you? Are these people you could work with? Is this an environment? Is this a company that you could see yourself? Um, it's one thing to match the right people on paper, the, might, the right person or the right job. Um, I think someday a computer could probably do that, you know, and, and, someone, and, and that people are always afraid Monster and ZipRecruiter that they would um, replace your, your traditional executive recruiter. But I think we're where the, uh, where the where that, I guess where that doesn't quite work is when it comes to those soft skills and the emotional intelligence and interpersonal and just personality that folks have and getting to know your clients just as well. Um, because that, that plays just as big a role, if not more, in long-term success. What are some lessons that you have learned as a business owner that you can share with people out there if they would like to start maybe an executive search firm like yours or any business for that matter? I would say control your message. Um, if we're talking specifically this industry, um, I think there's a reason that there are a lot of call them boutique um, recruiting firms that start up because generally speaking, there's not a lot of overhead that goes into it. You're not buying a $5,000 Dutch oven or a, uh, a refrigerator, all these fixed asset costs in a storefront, brick and mortar. Um, this is something that can be done remotely and, and um, even folks have done on the side. So there's a, a natural inc inclination, I think, to, to grow as quickly as you can. Um, I think one of the things that's benefited me and my business partner uh, the most really is managing our growth, controlling the process, um, making sure the folks that we bring on board are, are bought in completely. They understand what makes us different, the reason that we slow down on certain things. Um, I would say if someone were to consider this, I would say have faith in what you're doing, commit 100%. Don't start it off as a side gig while you're working your other business. I think if you're going to do it, go into it full force. Um, be honest with yourself. People can read through you if you're just spouting out a line or reading off a computer. So find your own voice and then control your message. Trust you. So not show you that I'm looking at my prompts. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to add? You know, I think um, if I could provide maybe some insights is what I'm seeing in this very unique job market now for both clients and candidates. I don't know how much time we have, so cut me off if you need to. Um, I get these questions a lot, and it comes from every level, um, any sort of industry, any type of business. 
I think clients, particularly in this post-COVID world, are, are struggling in a lot of areas to keep up. I think particularly in Hawaii. Um, and I think I say that partially because um, I'm seeing a lot of organizations that used to get apl applicants at the lower to mid-level position that just aren't there anymore, which is forcing them to reconsider their comp structures, things that are very difficult to change as a business. So I think as a business owner, one of the things that I'm seeing the most successful ones do are maybe if you can't change your entire department's comp structure, because that's perhaps millions of dollars, adding ancillary benefits, particularly if you're tailing to the millennial and Gen X or Gen Z or Gen Z uh, generation, um, little things like being open to some sort of a hybrid workforce, um, that's becoming somewhat more of the norm and that's a massive bargaining chip. I think that um, offering little added incentives like um, taking a day off a month to, to volunteer or employee incentive programs where they help pay for your gym, things that maybe you know, will affect your bottom line and you're, you're investing in your employees, but not, not only does that help you get them over the line, but that helps with retention. It's far more expensive as a business owner to replace an employee to bring on, than to bring on a new one. With that, as an employer still, I would say speed is very important um, because there's a smaller group of candidates out there. Businesses aren't able to sit on their hands for three weeks as they, you know, mull through 15 different applicants or even three different applicants. I'm seeing more and more um, candidates just with more options. Part of that is mainland companies open to hybrid work. Um, so I think speed to market is important. That doesn't mean you can't go through all, check your boxes and, and vet them out as best you can, but I think speed to market is important. Flipping over to the candidate side, I think speed to market, ironically enough, is important as well. Um, if you apply to, to a company and you're interested, you have to respond relatively quickly and you have to be willing to move through the process somewhat at their speed, um, which can be daunting to some people um, because it is a very important decision. But that kind of leads into the final thing. And that's something that I see with a lot of folks, I would say you and I, our age demographic, uh, millennials, is it's really easy to hop. And to say, look, this is hard. This isn't what I expected. This, I'm not seeing the opportunities or I'm not getting evaluated the way that I thought. Um, my advice would be to stick it out as long as you can. Um, employers don't love to see job hopping. There's always a reason behind it. There's always a story. You can tell that story as best you can, but do your best to work through it. Um, try every avenue of making it work in your, in your current employer before you feel like you have to jump ship and go somewhere. Great words of advice, Charlie. We have about less than a minute left. Let's pull up your website. If people would like to get a hold of you to learn more about your company or you, where do they go to? You can go to banyanrecruitment.com. Um, we have a subscribe button. Um, our emails are on there. Please feel free to dig around. My contact directly um, is on the bottom there as well, but charlie at banyanrecruitment.com. Would love to hear from anyone. Um, interested. Thank you again, Charlie Tate, principal owner of Banyan Recruitment, for being on the show today. Really appreciate you. And thank you to Jay Fidel and the entire staff at Think Tech Hawaii as well for making shows like this possible. Today we had Michael and Haley helping us out. Until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.